I'm getting in tune here. Is this a family version? Um, yes, this is. It's the way we used to sing it in our family. In the evenings when we got come down out of the cornfields, uh, I say down out of the cornfields because uh, eastern Kentucky is all very s uh, steep mountains and the farms are all up on the hillsides and people's little garden patches and houses are down in the valley. And so all the farming was done on steep hillsides. So we had, when we had did the corn hoeing, we were sort of bracing ourselves up there and going hoeing around the hill. And uh, um, in the evenings, we were ready to sit down and rest and swim in the river and then rest and uh, talk over the day's happenings and sing ballads. Like more Thomas and Carol. Yes, that's right.
as he drew his sword from his side, as he came through the hall, he cut off the head of his bonny brown bride, and he kicked it against the wall, then placing the handle towards the wall, and the blade towards his heart. Said, did you ever see three true lovers meet that had so soon to part? Oh, mother, oh, mother, go dig my grave and dig it all wide and deep and bury fair Ellender in my arms and the brown girl at my feet. glad tidings and she tells us no lies she sucks all pretty flowers to make her voice clear and she never sings cuckoo till the spring of the year come on On the love of a man For the roots they will wither The branches decay He'll turn his back on you And he'll walk square away If you do forsake me I'll not be forsworn And they'll all be mistaken if they think that I'll mourn For I'll get myself up in some higher degree And I'll walk his light by him as he can by me Oh, the cuckoo, she's a pretty bird She sings as she flies No lies. She sucks all pretty flowers to make her voice clear, and she never sings cuckoo till the spring of the year. Welcome to the Folk Sources of American Culture. I'm Jean Bluestein, and my guest again on this program is Jean Ritchie. Uh, Jean, last time we talked mostly about the traditional materials in your repertoire and your approach to them. This opening song is, is uh, an interesting example of a traditional tune, a very old tune, probably uh, an old English and Irish. Don't you have an Irish version of it somewhere? I can't think of an Irish one, but there's some uh, older English ones yeah, that I and have. It's a, it's Scottish, a, some Scottish ones. And a very well-known yeah. one uh, also. And yet, uh, your approach to it is very unusual. It's really something that you invented, isn't it? When people growing, when you were growing up in your area, nobody ever played the dulcimer quite like that, did they? <laughs> With a counter melody going? No, I thought I made that up. You know, when I when I was a little girl, I tried to play the dulcimer and sing Aunt Rhody or something like that, and my voice, I couldn't hear it because the melody on the instrument was kind of covering it up, and I, when I sang a little louder, then I couldn't hear the instrument, so I started playing against, uh, playing a tone against the, no, the note that I was singing, mm -hmm. and uh, even though I knew nothing about harmony or theory or anything, I was able to make a little, uh, a little descant there, and uh, that carried over into all the songs then, all especially all the slow songs that I sang and on the dulcimer. So I, I said, well, that's something that I've invented. 
And uh, it's not traditional, I guess, because uh, I made it up and it's modern. <laughs> but then I found an old book that dates back to the Middle Ages, and it, it tells about that, that technique of playing. Yes, but surely not that technique of playing in the Southern Appalachians when you were growing no, up. No, no, so, I did make it up so as far is. as I'm concerned. Gina was at the beginning of what is now a very distinguished uh, career. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the things that has always interested me about your career and your whole approach to it. Uh, you are still a traditional singer, and yet you have been living in a non-traditional culture for a long, long time. But you don't seem to have ever thought of that as a problem. or Has it come up as a problem? No, not once I made up my mind. You know, when I first went to New York and worked, <clears throat> I worked as a social worker in the Henry Street Settlement, and uh, the the music people there at the Henry Street Settlement were always saying, you have a very lovely voice, you ought to get it trained. Yes. And uh, they wanted to send me to school and everything like that. And I, I had tried that once when I was in college. I had tried taking a few voice lessons because people even then were saying, what a pretty voice, you ought to get it trained, you know. <laughs> So um, one day I came home, one time I came home from vacation, and I mean from school on vacation, and I was washing the dishes, and I was singing Barbara Ellen in my new voice, you know, I'd taken three voice lessons, and I was singing, <laughs> all in the middle. When my father heard me, he said to my mother, is that young and sick? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I thought, well, that, you know, that sort of brought me back to myself, and I said, well, really, the songs I sing, my voice shouldn't be produced that way. It should, I should imitate the old people that I learned from. That's what I decided to do. And uh, so I, I sing like my mother and father and, and uh, just whatever natural voice I have. And it's not done right, I know, but it's, um, it's sort of folk. It's the way I learned. 